Hello. In today's video, I will comment on how the James Webb Telescope has contributed to the crisis of the Big Bang Theory, and which theories have gained strength in explaining the beginning of the universe. We must say that doing science at the edge of the unknown is like walking in the dark. The models discussed are based on known laws and mathematical rules, whose validation proof is experimental observation. In this context, the powerful James Webb Telescope brought a problem to be solved when it found galaxies whose formation epoch does not coincide with the standard model of cosmology, highlighting the need to update the concept of the Big Bang. We call the standard model of cosmology the Big Bang Theory, which is still the most likely theory when it comes to seeking the origin and evolution of the known universe. This is due to observations of the expansion of the cosmos, the formation of structures from quantum fluctuations of density and temperature measured in the cosmic microwave background radiation, stellar formation, and various other laws, mathematical rules, and observations. But there are some important points that remain unanswered or unconnected in this model, leading some scientists to cite a possible crisis in the standard model of cosmology. One of these points, and one of the most important, refers to the recent observations made by NASA's James Webb Space Telescope. With it, researchers detected galaxies much more distant and consequently much older than the standard model predicts, which should be impossible. These galaxies have what we can call an age problem known as age redshift relation. The standard model says that matter as we know it began to form approximately 400,000 years after the Big Bang. This period known as the primordial universe was when electrons and protons attracted each other and formed the first hydrogen atoms. Then came the formations of gases and the remaining background radiation, then the first stars and all the other chemical elements we know. This first generation of stars exploded, creating the first supernovae that threw various primordial elements into space around them. And after generations of stars and sequences of supernovae, our universe began to have heavy elements and enough UV radiation to fuel the formation of galaxies. And then we have the redshift, which takes into account the expansion of the universe and the separation between galaxies. Distances are measured by observation and cannot be altered. From our model of an expanding universe, guided by Einstein's general relativity, we insert into it our understanding of matter, as expressed in the standard model of particle physics. Together, they tell us how distance, or redshift, correlates with age since the Big Bang. The problem is that the James Webb Telescope, in its early observations, found galaxies with redshifts larger than predicted, therefore, with much older ages than the Big Bang theory presupposes. With the James Webb, we discovered well-structured galaxies that would have been generated too early in cosmic evolution. In other words, the Big Bang model will need to be updated to explain these observations. Meanwhile, other theories about the creation of the universe end up gaining strength increasing discussions and the volume of studies that allow them to be considered probable. The first one I will comment on is the loop quantum gravity theory. While the Big Bang theory explained earlier is based on Einstein's relativity, loop quantum gravity is based on quantum physics. This theory reorganizes the idea of continuity of space-time proposed by the theory of relativity. Thus, space-time would be granular, and these grains would be organized next to each other giving an impression of continuity. Thus, there would be no singularity like in the Big Bang, but a grand meeting of a collapsing previous universe, similar to a black hole. Another theory would be the M theory. This theory is based on general relativity and the idea of quantum mechanics, and seeks to unify five different theories of superstrings and supergravity. All the dimensions would be coiled and inaccessible to human knowledge, but their effects would have influence on the development of other possible universes. Thus, our universe according to the M-theory would be part of a multiverse consisting of countless others which move away, expand, collide, and restart. Before continuing, I would like to ask for your like. It is very important for the channel and together with your comment and your subscription, it will make this channel viable and will allow more time to be invested in the search for content case studies and improvement in the quality of the script and the video as a whole. So please, leave your like so we can continue and improve with each new video. Now we move on to the next theory that is still in its embryonic phase in terms of popularity, but which has been gaining some strength. This theory would be the cosmological natural selection. It says that the origin of the universe would be an extension of Darwin's theory, where our universe would have arisen from a black hole of another universe, that is, a cosmological selective process would have allowed our universe to arise from the end of another. 
The formation of black holes in a previous universe would lead to a cosmological evolutionary process, where the universes that would be able to create more black holes would have a greater possibility of reproduction. And over time the universes more efficient in generating black holes would become more common, while the less efficient ones would extinguish. This theory paves the way for another theory where we would live in a black hole, but that is the subject of another video that is being written and will come to the channel soon. And finally, we have the oscillating universe theory. This last theory states that the Big Bang is just the beginning of an expansion process, which is still present. However, the energy released by the big explosion that gave rise to this universe has a limit, and the gravitational effect of bodies acts as a force contrary to expansion. At some point, the gravitational force will become greater than the energy generated by the explosion, giving rise to the reverse process of retraction. The universe's retraction will culminate in the opposite of the Big Bang, the Big Crunch, chaining a singularity and a new Big Bang. This process of expansion and retraction may have occurred countless times, with this universe being one among many others, allowing us to think again about the theory of the multiverse. It's amazing how the theories are all connected in some way, giving rise to so many other theories. At the moment I am writing this video, I see opportunities for another five or six new texts to be studied and written, which in turn will open opportunities for even more complex ones. So we continue to raise answers that allow us to create even more questions. And you? What do you think of the theories explained? Would you like more details about any of them? Write it down in the comments, take the opportunity to leave your like and your subscription. And I'll see you in the next video.